Hi, this is uh, Hank Nettitune with Westone. Really pleased to be with you today. I'd like to welcome all of you to the website and listen in today. Really our goal was uh, not necessarily to make a W80 or an, even an 8 driver earpiece. We wanted to take our earpieces to the next level. What's the next great sound that we could come up with? At Westone, the sound is the most important priority. Um, after that, we figure out the casing and, and cables and all that type of thing. But um, our goal was really just to come up with a, not a new sound, but to see if we could take it to the next level to, to really improve upon what we already had. Uh, with the W80, um, Carl Cartwright, our, our lead sound designer, um, he'd really sort of started focusing on the harmonics of the sound to uh, really bring that out. And uh, he felt like very strongly that, that was what the next step was with our earpieces. So with the W80, um, I think he was really able to do that. Uh, the four um, high frequency drivers really expand and enhance the harmonics of the music so that you can really uh, get a better sense of the type of room it was recorded in, the, uh, the quality of the instruments. You just hear so much more detail and clarity and uh, that's the, the biggest difference between the W80 and the W60, I think. As far as uh, you know, the number of drivers is concerned, uh, we don't really have a policy. Uh, as I said, the, the most important uh, priority criteria for us is improved sound. If we can do something to improve the sound of, a, of an earphone, um, and not even improved because I, I can't say there's anything wrong with the W60. I didn't need to be improved, but if we can enhance the sound in some way, uh, we're going to look at all the options to do that. Um, as driver technology has improved and changed over the last few years, we're actually able to get really incredible sound out of fewer, smaller drivers. And so um, adding drivers doesn't necessarily help us. Um, it really depends on what your long-range goal is in the earpiece. Um, you know, if you were to make, say, uh, if you wanted a very bassy, you know, for like hip-hop or rap, very strong, heavy, low-end, you could actually probably do that better with less drivers than with more. Um, if you really want to kind of get that gritty reverb kind of feel to the low frequencies, one big driver could do that much better than two smaller drivers. And so, again, it kind of depends on what your objective is with the earpiece. Um, but if we were to find that adding two more or four more drivers could, could give us something that we you know, weren't able to get out of fewer, we'd be open to that. Um, but I wouldn't say it's our goal to keep adding drivers and keep adding drivers. That, that doesn't really make sense if we're not improving the overall sound. Yeah, again, we were looking for a, a different sound, an improved, enhanced sound, and uh, we've been through this process now. It's been about two and a half years developing the W80, and so uh, throughout that, it meant a lot of time, obviously, but throughout that period, Carl looked at the number of drivers, the cables, the crossovers, every kind of combination, and. Uh, you know, component of the earpiece we looked at to see, you know, what could we change or tweak or, you know, add a little bit more to get that sound that we were looking for. So, um, yeah, he tried, he tried doing it with six drivers, he tried doing it with four drivers, ten, seven, nine, um, but eight is kind of where everything came together and where we got the sound that we really were looking for. It's, it's really, it's, it's a great benefit for Westone. Um, Chris and Carl started working at Westone in 1979, actually in the lab making custom earpieces for hearing aids in those days. And uh, between them, they put together, I mean, actually had their hands on around 2 million earpieces, custom earpieces. So they have seen a huge range of human ears um, and they bring that knowledge to every earpiece, whether it's music or whatever that they design. Uh, they know the human ear very well. They know what fits and what doesn't and, and what angles and you know everything that goes into a very comfortable, uh, long-wearing 
great fitting earpiece. And so when they design a universal earpiece like the W80, all of that history and experience goes into that. Um, so that, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like they don't have to think about it anymore because they've been doing it for so long. Uh, but they're able to pack everything in there. And Chris is a very gifted designer to be able to uh, take a look at the components. He's got eight drivers and how to fit them together, almost like a jigsaw puzzle to fit in that small compact shell. Yeah, I mean, some ear pieces, like you said, you listen to them for a while and maybe 10 minutes, you just, you just can't take it anymore. It's called, we call it ear fatigue. Um, and so that's a, an important factor that, that Carl uses when developing a sound that you can wear it for, for, you can sleep with it on if you wanted to, you can wear it on a, you know, trans-specific air flight, you know, 12 hours on the plane and not have your ears just be exhausted after, after listening. Um, the main thing was, again, you know, we're very focused on the sound, so um, we wanted to add a premium cable. We felt like this was the flagship model of our line. We wanted to add some premium accessories to go with them. Um, we were aware that a lot of folks, especially Japanese audiophiles and, and elsewhere, um, went out and bought an upgraded cable. Now our Epic cable has been the industry standard for 20 years now. It's a great cable. It's very durable, uh, great sound delivery system. Uh, but you know, uh, again, a lot of people like an upgraded cable. So we we went out and we actually talked to quite a few cable manufacturers. I mean, there's some great great companies out there making cables right now. And uh, but again back to the sound. We wanted something that was going to um, be very compatible with our sound signature and we felt like we found that in the ALO cables. Um, just uh, had the same sort of characteristics that we were looking for in our music and so together it just even improved the sound even more. Yeah, I mean it's been very well received and uh, you know as part of this but I think there's certainly the potential that we'll have that available as a standalone accessory type product. Um, you can also get a similar cable from ALO right now. Um, it's something that they have in their product line already. Um, but if they want the West Tone Edition version of it, um, yeah, it, it should be available in the next several months. Um, well, there's a couple of reasons why the, the case is, is a little bit different in the packaging as well. Um, again, as a premium product, we really wanted to present a premium package, um, both external and internal. So we want to take a hard look at uh, you know, what we had and, and what people were, uh, how they were using it, what they wanted to use it for. Uh, we actually went out and talked to a lot of our customers, um, both retailers as well as consumers. Uh, Blake, our product and marketing manager, um, actually came to Japan and Korea and visited several places to to learn how people were using the products and what um, you know how we could better serve them. And that's really the genesis of where this case came from. You know, we learned that uh, a lot of people, especially passionate audiophiles, um, don't just carry their earphones and, and a music player. They'll have an amp or they'll have a digital audio player or whatever that comes with it. And so, um, but maybe they don't always want that. So they're going on a trip, they just take the small case or they, you know, they're in their daily life, they take the big case because that's everything that they want. So we've got, uh, you know, it's a great, very useful case. It's got a lot of compartments. We've got, panel here you can put in extra cables or ear tips or you can you have three different earphones here if you have your W80 and a W40 and you know something else they're all going to fit in here you, know, you can put in a sim card whatever here in these sections and this is a I think, really handy feature it comes apart so you can you know put your earphones in you have your music player you set that in there this comes out you can you know, put the panels back in so you can just arrange things the way you like it. So if you've got a digital audio player, it's going to fit in here along with your earphones and your amp and, you know, whatever else.
Yeah, it's always great to come out for the, the spring or the fall headphone festival. Um, this year was their, this event I guess was no different. A uh, lot of great, um, very passionate audiophiles and, and friends and coming through and fans that want to listen. Um, it was a great chance for us to, you know, really introduce the W80 here in Japan. And, and a lot of people listened to it and we had great feedback. Uh, very well received, thankfully. We're very pleased with that and uh, certainly appreciate Fujia Avic and, and all they do to hold these festivals and to invite us back each year. That's a good question. I, I think that uh, the Japanese audiophiles especially just seem so passionate about um, their, I don't know, I just call it a hobby, but uh, the music and, and um, uh, I was in one group where there was a competition to see who could put together the best kit of amps and I don't know what all. Uh, it was just amazing the, the work and the effort that goes into it. Um, and it's just the passion for it that's just really inspiring every time we come here. Um, other areas have that, but I'm not sure they have it quite to this degree. Uh, we had a, uh, in the US, we had a kind of a similar event uh, last week. And uh, there's some passionate people there, but the numbers aren't quite as large as they are here. Um, I don't know that we had 300 people come through that whole weekend, but uh, uh, it's um, it's growing. It's definitely growing in the U.S. Uh, Korea, Hong Kong is is closer to what's happening here in Japan, but I think Japan right now is kind of the the flag bearer for the, the industry. I think I may have mentioned, but this this project was two and a half years in the making. It took us two and a half years from where we kicked off the project to this point right now. So uh, a lot of these things have a kind of a long timeline. Uh, so as you can imagine, unless we wanted to wait two and a half years to launch something else, we have other things working on um, in, in the project pipeline at the moment. Uh, customs are something we're certainly taking a look at. and. Uh, We'll be looking at several different options. It could be number of drivers, it could be shell types, materials that go into it. Um, so a lot going on in that back room, uh, but nothing we're ready to talk about yet. Uh, there's certainly things coming. Um, don't know when that's gonna be right now. Um, and I'm not sure there's anything at this point specifically for the Japanese market, but uh, there are new products on the way and uh, just, you know, ask that you stay tuned and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we have something to announce. Well, absolutely. I think it's a great product. I think there's a lot of enjoyment uh, that it's due. And to some extent, after two and a half years, we want to take a breath <laughs> before we rush right into the next big launch. But uh, there's certainly more in the pipeline and uh, you know, look forward to introducing that to you folks later. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily see that ever changing. I mean, that is the West Tone sound, as you said. Uh, very warm, very balanced, very even, non-fatiguing. Um, that is sort of the, the hallmark that we've built our brand on, is that sound signature. And I don't, I don't necessarily see that changing. You know, we may come out at some point, um, have a bass-heavy earphone for that segment of the market. I mean, it's possible. I, we don't have any plans at this point, but that may happen. But generally speaking, the sound signature is, is going to be consistent from product to product. You know, at this point, we really don't. Um, we've looked at a lot of different options, and uh, right now we feel like MMCX is the kind of the industry standard. Um, we have taken a lot of uh, time and energy into researching the MMCX and um, seeing how we might be able to improve its functionality. And we found that there wasn't any really great specs on the MMCX on how it fit together. Uh, it had kind of general sizes, but if you had um, two different connectors, a, a male and a female from different companies, they would fit together, but they not, may not fit together very well. And so uh, Westwin actually kind of led a consortium of manufacturers and cable producers and, and earphone companies to take a really hard look at the MMCX and uh, 
uh, get more consistent with the specs on those so that they do fit together better so you do get better connectivity and um, we've actually come up with a for us anyway a new standard that we're calling MMCX audio because of course the MMCX wasn't originally made for this kind of purpose it was a coax kind of connector so um, the MMCX audio connectors fit better together that they're uh, uh, more um, just a, it's a tighter fit better connectivity uh, better sound delivery and they're going to hold up a little better over time than, than the traditional MMCX and so all of our products are going to have the MMCX audio connector here moving forward uh, it'll be a transition over time as we move that uh, into the product lineup but uh, we're very pleased with that um, improvement to the MMCX and I see that uh, being our connector of choice for you know at least the foreseeable future Well, finally, I'd just like to, to thank all of you who came out this weekend to the festival, tried the W80, uh, gave it a listen. If you haven't had a chance, please get out to the stores and uh, try it out. I think you're really going to be pleased with the sound signature. We appreciate everybody that uh, has tried West Home, whatever the product in the past, and uh, we love that we have so many passionate fans here in Japan. Arigato.